see this? This is me paying $631 to Hertz to have an absolutely horrible experience. Last week, I went on a beautiful vacation to Tuscany, Italy and rented a car. And I have to say, it was absolutely a horrific experience. After a 14 hour flight, I endured long waits, endless forms, a missing reservation and having to hike across a parking lot just to find my car. But there is a better way. Let me show you my terrible car rental experience and a simple solution that lets you avoid this situation in many countries around the world. Finally, we're in Florence, just got at the airport. Now it's nice because the rental car shuttle place is right out front and it's so tiny. So we're gonna hop on the shuttle and hopefully make our way over. Um, now we are at the rental car lot. We are actually trying to look for the Hertz office. We went to one building and there was a sign that says the Hertz office was closed and to walk over to this other area and it's raining and it's cold and our bags are heavy and we're also coming off a 14 hour flight. So we are pretty exhausted, but trying to figure out where the heck we can check in for our reservation and hopefully get this car. So this is the way that everyone was walking and I think we are almost there, but a nice cold day in Italy. Hopefully this weather turns around. All right guys, so we're here in the Hertz office. Now it looks like a bunch of people, but that's because there's multiple car rental companies in here. However, there was only two people in line for Hertz. So they were having an issue finding my reservation, even though I had a confirmation. Um, but thankfully it was right in front of them all along. And as we're trekking out to the car, it was really sad because there was this other guy who got his car, the guy that was in front of us and it was covered in bugs. So fingers crossed that it is not the case for our car, but it looks like this blue car right here, not sure exactly what it is, but it looks like it is in fact our car. All right, here is our car. I actually have no idea what this is. A Link and Co. Not sure. Not super clean, but this is what we got. Online it said a Ford something. And this is not bad. Kind of cool looking, whatever this is. Seems pretty spacious. Horrible experience. Okay, after a 14 hour flight, we are stuck at the exit of Hertz because they didn't give us the ticket to get out of the parking lot. And it is raining. Imagine there being rental car companies back in the day and getting to rent one of these. How incredible would that be? Now getting back to business and talking about car renting, I mean, it is such an infuriating experience when you are coming off of a long flight, 14 hours, and you go to a place of business where their primary thing that they do that they specialize in is renting out cars. So going to Hertz and having only two customers in front of me and still having to wait over an hour to get the keys to my car for a reservation that I had already made is just, that's not how it should be. Why does it take that long? Now, not only that, the other crazy thing was that I was not the only person that had a bad experience there. The guy who was in front of me, he actually went to another Hertz location that happened to be closed for the day. So he had to come here to get his car. He couldn't get the car that he reserved. And then when he did finally get his car, it ended up being full of spiders and bugs. And he was super unhappy about that. You know, it's raining outside, people are tired. And, you know, especially for traditional car rental companies that have been around for ages, like Hertz and Enterprise and the big ones, especially, you should not be having these issues. And that's why peer-to-peer -peer car sharing, whatever platform you're on, that's why it continues to get so much traction and it continues to grow and why people choose that. And I wish Turo was here in Italy because I would have definitely gone that route, but they're not here yet. But other peer-to-peer -peer car sharing platforms are popping up and this is 
why, you know, it's continuing to grab that market share because the experience is absolutely so terrible. Now to continue on with the bad experience, they were supposed to give me a card for tolls. And after we had left, I took so many toll roads coming out here to um, the countryside of Tuscany. And every single time, because I didn't have that toll card, I got yelled at by some Italian man. So, you know, it's again, just kind of goes back to the fact that like, there's no one I can call at Hertz to say, hey, you know, how do I handle toll roads? Can you help me out? What do I say? Don't speak the language, you know? And that is really what makes the difference between car sharing platforms like Turo and traditional car sharing. It is no surprise why peer-to-peer -peer car sharing platforms are really starting to take off because people are having better experiences. Now, as many of you know, I am a host of peer-to-peer -peer car sharing services like Turo. You can think of it like Airbnb, but for cars. Now, Turo wasn't available in Italy when I visited or I would have definitely used it, but it is available in 56 countries across the world. And here's why I think that Turo is a better option whenever it is available to you or Turo-like services. So here are some of the advantages. Now, after being a host for eight years, one of the things that I love about Turo and hosting on Turo is that you don't have an office, right? And you're able to do remote handoffs. So typically as a renter, you can find a host that's already in your area and that has a real seamless process for you to pick up the car where you don't have to worry about standing in line, where you don't have to worry about, you know, not getting the car that you actually booked on your reservation. And if the host isn't available to meet with you, then apps like Tura already have contactless handoffs where you can leave the key in the car and a person can just show up, do all the verification online, and they are good to go literally within minutes. Number two, no lines, you know, especially if someone has traveled, even if it's three, four, five, six, eight hours, whatever it might be, no one wants to spend any more time having to wait in line and fill out paperwork and verify identities and look for reservations. And that is the beauty of Turo is literally you can land somewhere, you can arrive somewhere and you can just begin your trip, your destination, your vacation and start enjoying yourself. Whereas with a Hertz or Enterprise, you're typically walking into a brick or mortar, there are long lines, or you have to go through some sort of a process. I've almost never heard of anyone picking up a car from a traditional car rental company without spending at least an hour in process. Then of course, there is no confusion about your reservation. Now, when I first booked this Hertz car, it said it was gonna be a Ford Kuga. I think I'm saying that right, or similar, right? So you never quite know what you're gonna get. Now, I was a little bit worried because there was four of us traveling we all had bags and of course with it being Europe Europe is notorious for having smaller cars because the streets are smaller so I wanted to make sure that we had booked a car that would definitely fit our bags so that we wouldn't have any additional issues now because they don't exactly guarantee the car I was definitely a little bit stressed out in that we might end up in a car that wasn't gonna be big enough so that is the beauty of Turo is that you can really anticipate for the car that you're gonna get you know exactly how much space you're gonna have how many bags a car can fit, how many seats a car has. Whereas with traditional car rental companies, you just don't have that peace of mind when you're renting a car. And then finally, another thing that is so amazing about renting from peer-to-peer -peer car sharing like Turo is that you can often find keys in a lockbox or you can have unlocking, locking from just within the app, right? So over the years, Turo has developed things like Turo Go, where a host can control the reservation from their app and a guest can do the same. So a guest can arrive at their leisure, they can check in with their driver's license and they can unlock the car right from an easy, simple to use app, which just makes life so much easier because then you can really account for your time, move seamlessly and with ease. And so that just makes life so much better. And then finally, getting stuck in a parking lot in Italy with a bunch of people honking at you and angry is no fun. So you don't have to kind of trek through these parking lots where there's a ton of cars. You're looking for a specific spot number. You're looking for a specific car that matches the key that you have. Tour is just so much simpler because it typically is a one-on-one -on -one experience where you're dealing with one host and they are providing you with one very specific car. The thing that 
I love the most about peer-to-peer -peer car sharing is their innovation with technology, right? They have made this whole experience so much better. So in my case in Italy, I wanted to return the car early, but literally had no way of modifying my reservation. I tried calling Hertz, I tried going online. Every time I hit the modify button on my reservation, it would just give me an error or have me book a new trip. And there was just no way that I could get the remainder of my money back. And with Turo, it's as easy as, you know, going to your reservation, hitting change trip and adjusting your drop off date and time. Because the truth is when you're traveling, things change, right? Sometimes things can go on that you don't exactly account for. And it's hard to plan for every single little detail. And so when you have that flexibility, it just makes life so much easier. You feel confident in renting from a peer to peer car sharing platform because you know, hey, okay, I have flexibility should things change and I'm not gonna get ripped off. I'm not gonna pay more than what I should. So that's where there are so many advantages of using apps like Turo to rent cars versus going through your traditional car rental companies. Now, the thing that I found most surprising about it all is, as you guys saw, I paid 630 plus dollars for a six day rental. Now, if you look at my receipt though, it shows the actual day rate, which was around $60. So very similar to Turo, traditional car rental companies really hike up the rate that you end up paying overall when it comes to your day rate. So it almost doubles. Now, a lot of people have that complaint about Turo, but it looks like it does exist in both realms. Now that doesn't make it right, but it is what it is, right? So it happened in that case too, and it happens on Turo too. And hopefully that's something in the future that these car rental companies, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer car sharing or it's traditional car rental companies, do end up changing. If you're really interested in learning about Turo, you can check out the links down in my description below or head on over to powerhost.club. And it is just a wonderful platform to be a part of and you can learn all about it there.